Rome had always attracted religious pilgrims, but in the 18th century, the city had become an important destination for the wealthiest of travelers. They came from all over Europe looking to connect their cultural roots. As the English doctor Samuel Johnson said, all our religion, almost all our law, almost all our arts, almost all that sets us above savages has come to us from the shores of the Mediterranean. Travel was different in Vasi's day. It was much more complicated and it took longer and required greater resources. Only the very rich had the funds and leisure to travel. After 1648, when the Peace of Westphalia brought an end to a century of religious wars, a stabilized Europe became increasingly safe for travel. While people had always traveled for business or diplomacy, now increasing numbers were able to do so simply for self-education and the satisfaction of curiosity. The age of the Grand Tour was underway. The Grand Tour was a social and educational rite of passage for the privileged classes in which the travelers steeped themselves in Italian culture. The pace was slower and more immersive than the way we travel today, with trips taking anywhere between six months and two years. For the elites of Northern Europe, educated as they were on Cicero and Caesar, Rome was the climax of the trip. The typical grand tourist was a man in his 20s. Sometimes he came with a wife or even children, but nearly all of them brought a small entourage of servants, often including a coachman, accountant, a tutor, and sometimes even an artist to sketch the sights the way a modern tourist takes a snapshot. Early travelers fueled the vogue for the Italian journey by publishing memoirs. Their fellow countrymen would read these and draw up itineraries in which they followed in the footsteps of their predecessors. And most travelers followed similar routes, including a lengthy stay in the great art city of Florence, a season in the splendid floating city of Venice, as well as a winter stay in the Bay of Naples. The arrival at Rome and entry into the city was always an exciting moment for the first-time traveler. The Englishman, William Beckford, wrote, Shall I ever forget the sensations I experienced upon slowly descending the hills and crossing the bridge over the Tiber? When I entered the avenue, which leads to the Porta del Popolo, and beheld the square, the domes, the obelisk, the long perspective of streets and palaces opening beyond, all glowing with the vivid red of sunset? Some tourists were less appreciative than others, however. Pierre Leone Gezzi satirized the uneducatable youth in his caricature of the tour guide, who was colloquially called a bear leader. As the English traveler Joseph Craddock wrote in his memoirs, foreign travel is knowledge to a wise man and foppery to a fool. But many of the visitors threw themselves at the opportunities with vigor and appreciation. They took lessons from antiquarians, they bought guidebooks like Giuseppe Vassi's Itinerario Istrutivo, and they studied the city's sights and thought seriously about its lessons. And just as today, the grand tourists shop for mementos of their travels. The very wealthiest of tourists acquired ancient Roman sculptures and galleries full of paintings. Along with these painted works, the tourists collected many other types of souvenirs, including miniature bronze sculptures and book-bound cases like these, which held collections of plaster cast cameos reproducing ancient and modern Roman art. They also collected beautiful micro-mosaics of Roman splendors and, of course, volumes of prints by Vasi or Piranesi. These mementos would allow the tourists to recall their travels and boast of their experiences to others. Drawing them off the shelves in their far-off homes, they could reflect on their fantastic journeys and travel back through their memories of Rome.